Venus and Furs by Ritter von Leopold Sakramasek. Of this book, intended for private circulation, only 1225 copies have been printed and type afterward distributed, translated from the German by Fernanda Savage. Contents Introduction Venus and Furs Introduction Leopold von Sakramasek was born in Lemberg, Austrian Galicia, on January 27, 1836. He studied jurisprudence at Prague and Graz, and in 1857 became a teacher at the latter university. He published several historical works, but soon gave up his academic career to devote himself wholly to literature. For a number of years he edited the International Review, after Hohe, at Leipzig, but later removed to Paris, for he was always strongly Francophile. His last years he spent at Lindheim in Hesse, Germany, where he died on March 9, 1895. In 1873, he married Aurora von Rummelin, who wrote a number of novels under the pseudonym of Wanda von Dunaju, which it is interesting to note is the name of the heroine of Venus in Furs. Her sensational memoirs, which have been the cause of considerable controversy, were published in 1906. During his career as writer an endless number of works poured from Sakramazica's pen. Many of these were works of ephemeral journalism, and some of them unfortunately pure sensationalism, for economic necessity forced him to turn his pen to unworthy ends. There is, however, a residue among his works which has a distinct literary and even greater psychological value. His principal literary ambition was never completely fulfilled. It was a somewhat programmatic plan to give a picture of contemporary life in all its various aspects and interrelations under the general title of the heritage of Cain. This idea was probably derived from Balzac's comedy Humane. The whole was to be divided into six subdivisions with the general titles Love, Property, Money, The State, War, and Death. Each of these divisions in its turn consisted of six novels, of which the last was intended to summarize the author's conclusions and to present his solution for the problems set in the others. This extensive plan remained unachieved, and only the first two parts, Love and Property, were completed. Of the other sections, only fragments remain. The present novel, Venus and Furs, forms the fifth in the series, Love. The best of Sakramazica's work is characterized by a swift narration and a graphic representation of character and scene and a rich humor. The latter has made many of his shorter stories dealing with his native Galicia little masterpieces of local color. There is, however, another element in his work which has caused his name to become his eponym for an entire series of phenomena at one end of the psychosexual scale. This gives his productions a peculiar psychological value, though it cannot be denied also a morbid tinge that makes them often repellent. However, it is well to remember that nature is neither good nor bad, neither altruistic nor egoistic, and that it operates through the human psyche as well as through crystals and plants and animals with the same inexorable laws. Sakramazic was the poet of the anomaly now generally known as masochism. By this is meant the desire on the part of the individual affected of desiring himself completely and unconditionally subject to the will of a person of the opposite sex, and being treated by this person as by a master, to be humiliated, abused, and tormented, even to the verge of death. This motive is treated in all its innumerable variations. As a creative artist Sakramazic was, of course, on the quest for the absolute, and sometimes, when impulses in the human being assume an abnormal or exaggerated form, there is just for a moment a flash that gives a glimpse of the thing in itself. If any defense were needed for the publication of work like Sacramazica's, it is well to remember that artists are the historians of the human soul, and one might recall the wise and tolerant Montaigne's essay on the duty of historians where he says, one may cover over secret actions, but to be silent on what all the world knows, and things which have had effects which are public and of so much consequence is an inexcusable defect. And the curious interrelation between cruelty and sex, again and again, creeps into literature. 
Sacher Mazik has not created anything new in this. He has simply taken an ancient motive and developed it frankly and consciously until, it seems, there is nothing further to say on the subject. To the violent attacks, which his books meant he replied in a polemical work, Uber den Wert der Kritik. It would be interesting to trace the masochistic tendency as it occurs throughout literature, but no more can be done than just to allude to a few instances. The theme recurs continually in the Confessions of Jean-Jacques Rousseau. It explains the character of the Chevalier in Prévost's Manon et l'Escalte. Scenes of this nature are found in Zola's Nana, in Thomas Otway's Venice Preserved, in Albert Juhel's Les Pitches de Homs, in Dostoevsky. In disguised and unrecognized form, it constitutes the undercurrent of much of the sentimental literature of the present day though in most cases, the authors as well as the readers are unaware of the pathological elements out of which their characters are built. In all these strange and troubled waters of the human spirit, one might wish for something of the serene and simple attitude of the ancient world. Laurent Talhaid has an admirable passage in his Plater's E.T. Marbers, which is well worth reproducing in this connection. To the foie, Les Hellines, Don, Leur Sites de Lumière, De doser et de harmonie, avant une indulgence qu'on put nommer scientifique pour les troubles amour de l'esprit. Sils any regardant pas l'alien comme en proie à la visitation d'un dieu, idée oriental et fataliste, du moins ils savant que l'amour est un sort d'enboutement, un folie au esse manifest l'animacite de puissances cosmiques. Plus tard, le christianisme en balapa, les aimes de tenebres. So fut la grande nute. L'église condamne tout si que lui parit ne faut menicant pour les dogmes implacable, que le monde en esclavage. Among Sacramazica's works, Venus and Furs is one of the most typical and outstanding. In spite of melodramatic elements and other literary faults, it is unquestionably a sincere work written without any idea of titillating morbid fancies. One feels that in the hero, many subjective elements have been incorporated, which are a disadvantage to the work from the point of view of literature, but on the other hand, raise the book beyond the sphere of art, pure and simple, and make it one of those appalling human documents which belong part to science and part to psychology. It is the confession of a deeply unhappy man who could not master his personal tragedy of existence, and so sought to unburden his soul in writing down the things he felt and experienced. The reader who will approach the book from this angle and who will honestly put aside moral prejudices and prepossessions will come away from the perusal of this book with a deeper understanding of this poor miserable soul of ours, and a light will be cast into dark places that lie latent in all of us. Sacher Mazika's works have held an established position in European letters for something like half a century, and the author himself was made a chevalier of the Legion of Honor by the French government in 1883, on the occasion of his literary jubilee. When several years ago cheap reprints were brought out on the continent and attempts were made by various guardians of morality, they exist in all countries, to have them suppressed, the judicial decisions were invariably against the plaintiff and in favor of the publisher. Are Americans children that they must be protected from books which any European schoolboy can purchase whenever he wishes? However, such seems to be the case, and this translation, which has long been in preparation, consequently appears in a limited edition printed for subscribers only. In another connection, Herbert Spencer once used these words, the ultimate result of shielding men from the effects of folly is to fill the world with fools. They have a very pointed application in the case of a work like Venus and Furs.